Around the country, more than 3 million Americans fall into a health insurance coverage gap. This means they make too little money to qualify for tax credits to purchase health insurance on healthcare.gov and too much to qualify for Medicaid coverage. They are stuck in the gap with no affordable insurance options because their state leaders have refused to accept federal dollars that were set aside to help families afford health coverage. Who are these people? They are our neighbors and friends, many of whom work in industries such as construction and tourism, in restaurants and nursing homes, and other sectors vital to our economy, but which often do not offer health coverage to employees. Take for example Jane. Jane lives in a state that has not expanded Medicaid and has two kids, Michael and Sophia. She works 20 hours a week at Sam's Diner while earning her nursing degree at night. Her job does not offer health coverage to its part-time employees. This puts her in the coverage gap, with nowhere to turn for affordable coverage. So far, more than half the states have closed the coverage gap and made health coverage available to people who need it. And in these states, the impact has been striking. Large gains in insurance coverage, a healthier workforce because more people are using cost-effective primary care, and a drop in the amount of uncompensated care hospitals are providing. People living in these states are protected if they change or lose their job, or if they have a serious health condition that only insurance can pay for. The states that have not closed the coverage gap are headed down a different path. People without coverage remain one serious illness away from losing their life savings and going into debt. Some hospitals are closing because many of their patients don't have insurance that can pay their bills. And rather than bringing federal tax dollars home, state leaders are leaving this money in Washington. The good news is that states that have not closed the coverage gap can take action at any time, and states can craft a plan that works for them. The evidence is clear that closing the coverage gap is good for workers, businesses, and a state's economy. State leaders should move their state forward and do the right thing by closing the coverage gap.